Welcome, Marple, and joining with me tonight is the always fantastic, always fabulous Keith Guerrero. How are you doing tonight, Keith? I'm doing fabulous. Thank you so much for having me. You you know it. You're so welcome. You're so welcome. You deserved it. I'm honestly honored. <laughs> well, tonight we've got a couple of things to cover. We have our first evicted house guest from the Big Brother Canada house. Are, are you surprised that Risha was the one evicted? Uh, I was anticipating either side happening, uh, but I, I'm really glad that Canada pulled through um, and saved Pilar. I think that was a good call on Canada's behalf. Yeah, I'm actually I'm very excited to see Pilar still in the game. I thought that Pilar was done. You know, I was saying it last night um, or whenever. No, Monday night, sorry. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, uh, about how uh, Risha just had an overwhelming edit, and we didn't really get to see much of Pilar, so I, I wasn't sure if she was going to have to keep her in the game. Um, but yeah, I'm, I was super surprised, and I'm really glad, because I think the more we saw of Risha tonight, I was just like, you know, even, even if Risha stays, I would not be surprised if she was the next one to go, just because of her attitude and lack of social ability, and we'll kind of touch that here in a second, but... Uh, I'm really, I'm really glad to see Pilar still in. Uh, I think she definitely has um, what it takes to make it further in the game, but I don't know if she has what it takes to play. What do you, what do you think about Pilar staying? As far as Pilar staying, I think she'll get it over time who she can trust and who she can't trust. But she is so damn likable that I would, even if she did absolutely nothing and made it all the way to the end, I would be nervous sitting next to her in the final jury phase of the competition. Um, and there's something about Risha that I wanted to touch on because, like, it's difficult being the underdog, mm -hmm. um, but it was something about her demeanor or her attitude that made her just unlikable. Well, public. well, well, let's go ahead and get to the very beginning of the episodes because uh, first thing we see is you know Risha kind of uh, crying or you know keeping trying to keep herself together and then immediately going out and kind of flirting with the guys, mostly Kevin. How did you feel about that move? Uh, just her just coming right out of the gate already, pulling the flirtatious card. That was awkward. I don't think she understands the difference in the generations, you know, like the millennial generations versus her first gen. Um, and that might have been cool back in the 70s and the 80s, but now it's like really, really, like you could tell that she's a cougar with those tactics, like, you kind of have to reel it in a little bit. Yeah, I think she was definitely falling into that um, click. Like, even even during the eviction, she was wearing, like, cougar print dress, so you could tell that she was going to try and uh, pull that card so much. And, and, yeah, you know, as soon as she tried hugging and flirting with Kevin, we immediately he is not feeling this. He knows exactly what she's doing. And it just kind of shows how transparent she was as a player and, um, that's why I'm, I'm really happy that she's gone, just because I really didn't see her sticking around for another uh, week or so. Yeah, like, her, even in her DR, she said, like, I'm going to try to get in good with the girls, and I'm just going to flirt with the guys. I'm like, that type of strategy never works in Big Brother. If you just see it as, like, a guy-girl thing where you're friendly with the girls and you flirt with all the guys to get further, that's not going to happen. And you, she didn't do a good job assessing who's around her because there's nobody that's like her around her. She's used to, I'm guessing, getting attention, and uh, when that's not there, she has to start giving to receive anything, and she she just continually isolated herself, and I think Canada picked up on that even in the previous episode. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, which I'm, I'm super grateful for, but, you know, who knows? Maybe Kevin wasn't feeling it from Risha just because he was kind of getting some attention from another player in the house, uh, which is the next. We definitely saw a little connection, maybe, uh, between Johnny and Kevin, do we think that's going to maybe form into an alliance? Maybe, or are we going to get another Zanky 2.0? What are what are your thoughts on the on the Kevin Johnny relationship? I love it. I absolutely love the Kevin Johnny relationship. After seeing the Zanky relationship falter, I could kind of see the Kevin Johnny relationship falter. But when Johnny was down, Kevin was there, rubbed Johnny's back, um, and that was awesome to see. Like. Uh, but, you know, this is also just the beginning part of the stages. This is very the honeymoon stage, so we don't know who these people actually are yet. 
But right now it's looking into into a pretty it's looking like it's forming into a pretty good relationship that could potentially work long term. The tricky thing though is that everybody already sees them kind of together. That's true. That's true. Um, people definitely could paint them together, and uh, we've gotten a little bit of suspicion. We've got some plans about Kevin, uh, which we'll go here in a bit. But but for the most part, yeah, I, I do like the Kevin Johnny. Uh, I guess it might be too early to call it a duo. Uh, but yeah, I think that Johnny was a really, really super guy. I think he's a little sensitive just by how he was kind of breaking down a little bit from the safe. But I could definitely go for uh, Kevin and Johnny uh, twosome. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so let's go. I want to talk to you about Cindy a little bit because it sounds like she was working not one of the nominees but two of the nominees. Do we think that she's playing a little bit too intense or is she kind of uh, making the connections uh, that she needs to make to uh, survive the next few stages? I know why Cindy did it. She didn't need to do it, but I know why she did it. Um, and it's this complex called Survivor's Guilt. She was nominated. She knows what it feels like, and so she wants to, I guess try to lend out a olive branch to leave as many openings as possible. And uh, so in that sense, uh, I understand why she pursued uh, Risha and Pilar. Um, and it actually looked like she preferred Risha over Pilar, which I thought was very interesting because um, I think that either way, I think Cindy is definitely getting a lot of strategy airtime, which I'm appreciating from her, mm -hmm. uh, despite like strategizing with like two people from that are on the lowest on the totem pole, uh, I still appreciate it. Uh, but I think that the, the fact that she's actually playing the game and like trying to develop the relationships, um, and Pilar saying, you know, Cindy's not lying to me, and then cuts to Cindy's DR immediately, where she's saying, "Best friends for now." Emphasis on the now. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I think it's great. I, I I enjoy Cindy, and I really hope I get to see more of that. Uh, and I hope Cindy solidifies herself in an uh, influential position in the future. Quick question about Pilar, because I, I wanted to touch on this earlier, but I forgot about it. Because um, we had not only Risha make a comment about it, but Cindy as well. Do you think Pilar really doesn't have a game right now? Is she just laying low? Does she, is it something that... Are we going to see a strate uh, strategic side to Pilar in the no, future? I would say not. I think Pilar is one of those people that are simply playing the game and is being authentic and she's being observed. I'm not sure if she's seen a Big Brother season before or anything, but I see her as somebody that you brought over to your house um, maybe to play Sorry, and she never played Sorry before, but she's moving her piece around the board a little bit. So this is going to be a very intense experience for Pilar, but I think she could weave herself into a way that could potentially win. I mean, I think people just like her. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I agree. I don't think we're going to see too much of a strategic side uh, to Pilar, but if uh, one thing that I think the house guests should make note of is that, you know, it says a lot that she survived this vote because that means, you know, regardless of what Risha's edit would have been in the house, people in the house should now pick up on the fact that Canada likes uh, Pilar. You know, they love into the game, so, you know, that maybe could put a target on Pilar's back for a couple of reasons. I don't think it will. Uh, I think Pilar, for the most part, is just going to be that goofy girl that um, makes it to, like, Final Five, Final Four, and then, you know, gets let go. Um, but, yeah, I guess only time will tell. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so next thing I want to talk about is Kevin, because I think Kevin got a lot of screen time uh, tonight. You know, the house guests were faced with a challenge of keeping a bunch of balls in, uh, from the ground for five hours, and he was offered $1,000 if he sabotaged the ball that they had currently above the ground. Um, do you think, excuse me, do you think that Kevin made the right decision by taking the money, or do you think it would have been safer to just not do it? <laughs> The first issue I need to address is that there should be no $1,000 incentive. He should have done this for free. He came, <laughs> into, he came into the game saying he's going to sabotage every competition bluntly, and he has yet to do that. That aside, with $1,000 incentive and him deciding to go through it, I mean, this is Big Brother. This is what it's about. Like, it's about stirring the pot. And the only way to stir the pot is to cause some friction. And um, Kevin was presented basically 
a way of doing that on a silver platter with winning $1,000. So hell yes, take it. Um, I didn't realize he could pop it. I thought he had to, like, push it over and make it touch the floor, but the fact that he could pop it, he came up with a really good strategy to, to do it. It was a small earring um, in, embedded in a towel, uh, and he popped the balloon, uh, and it really did impress me. I thought he was so awkward, and he had such awkward energy. Like, he wasn't even out there the whole time, uh, but he comes in, and then he pops it, and then he goes. Um, but I thought it was hilarious, and I thought he pulled it off really well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I thought it was a really funny segment, and it may it 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 turned my it changed my mind a little bit about Kevin. I don't know, not strategically, but he's just I think he's going to be really entertaining this season. Um, I don't think there's any harm in taking the challenge. You know, it's a thousand dollars. Wants to see you perform these tasks. They they want they want the entertainment, and I think it was smart for him to kind of acknowledge that and pick up on that. I am wondering if his approach to sabotaging was the right one, though, because the way that he did it, although I thought it was pretty flawless, it did kind of cause some suspicion um, from other house guests. We saw Sarah and Brittany both kind of suspect him of being uh, some sort of saboteur. Do you think it would have almost been better for him to maybe do it in a way where it was obvious that it was him and then him own up to the mistake and the accident? Uh, or do you think it's better for him to do it the way that he did to where it's kind of up in the air and create paranoia? Uh, parano uh, paranoia? I think um, in Kevin's sense, I understand why he did it the way he did, and I think it's a smart route to go because there's going to be constantly paranoia inside the Big Brother house. And so the edit that we saw of Brittany and Sarah could have been one of a million theories that of how the balloon popped. Um, and I'm not sure if any other person really suspects uh, Kevin, but I do like that Sarah and Brittany got it correctly, but I'm not sure if they only think that way. They could think of other possibilities as well, how the balloon popped. Um, so, I mean, I think I think he pulled it off. Uh, even if people do suspect him a little bit, they don't have enough concrete evidence to say, okay, you are definitely the saboteur, and I'm coming after you. Uh, but I think the way Brittany said it was, said it was best. Like, we know this little bit of information. We have, like, this really good sense that Kevin's going to be responsible for some mayhem inside this house, and we're going to be just observing him. It was very Daniel Reyes uh, of just like we're just we're just going to keep this knowledge, and we're going to observe uh, what we see from this uh, class clown. He better wash his hands when he gets out of the bathroom. <laughs> They're going to be watching him. Okay, so so yeah, so since we already kind of touched on that, what what are you thinking about Sarah and Brittany? Because I I really like this too. So I, I don't know if it's really a solid alliance yet, but I love thinking about who uh, was stirring the pot. Uh, her and Brittany seem to be on a good page, and I don't know. I I could see a really good female power couple uh, between Brittany and Sarah. What are, what are your thoughts? I would absolutely love for those two to power together. Um, I think they're both thinkers. They're both. Uh, like, I think they both have a good sense of what it means to win or what it takes to win Big Brother, and I don't think they're going to be putting themselves in dangerous positions immediately. I see them getting in good with a lot of different people, so if they connected and they became a tight twosome, I would be head over heels in love with that alliance. I, it would probably be my, one of my favorite alliances, because I haven't seen many, like, tight, dynamic, woman-to-woman uh, pairs that have been successful in this game, and if they could be the first. Yeah, I would love to see them uh, make some moves here in the next, uh, here in the in the near future. Uh, but let's go ahead and talk about the other alliance that we definitely saw this episode. We saw Zach and Jordan, uh, David and Goliath alliance, the Brain and the Brawn. What are your thoughts uh, on these two uh, teaming up together? I approve in the sense that, you know, they, they do balance each other out. There is a really strong uh, athletic guy, and then there's a puzzle kind of nerdy type of guy. Um, but I also, I like, what the issue that I have was them solving the puzzle together in front of everybody. Um, I mean... You just, you just got to pick when you hang out with these people, and you don't do that. Like, even if you are starving and uh, you want to get, like, your your things back, I wouldn't, like, if you and I were in the house, I wouldn't work with you on the puzzle in front of everyone, you know? Like, you have to downplay every single moment if you plan on taking that alliance ship seriously. 
So if I had that conversation in the cupboard with you and I meant it, then we wouldn't need to hang out anymore, you know? Like, I would just move on to bettering my relationships elsewhere. Uh, but I think that their pairing makes sense. I'm just not sure how easy they'll be able to conceal it. I agree. I completely agree. You know, I, I don't think it's a bad uh, alliance. I think those two definitely would work well together. It's just the secrecy that they need to work on. Because like you said, when they were working on the puzzle, you know, you've got Jordan and, and Zach just right together. And even Zach's talking in his di uh, diary room about how proud he was that those two um, were able to solve the puzzle. And that was the greatest moment of his life. I'm sure he's going to be talking about it with some of the other house guests, about him and Zach were able to save the day. And I think that's really what it's going to boil down to. You know, we see this time after time after time, these two, you know, two players hooking up together at the end, talking about how no one would expect it. But then a week later, you got them, like, skipping together with their arms locked, you know? So we saw it in the first uh, Big Brother Canada season with Alec and Peter. You know, they had a late-night conversation talking about how they need to work together. No one would know. And then before you know it, they're running around doing the Shield logo and together. You know, so it's definitely something that they need to be aware of because it only takes one HOH round to um, put both of them on the block and one of them for sure is leaving the house. So, you know, I don't, I don't want to read too much into it because I don't think him helping him with the puzzle is that revealing but they definitely need to tone it down if they want to accomplish the secrecy of their alliance. What do you think about the fact that all their things were hidden and stuff? Would it be a big priority to you to solve the puzzle or to hold the balloon up for five hours? How would you play, place that aspect of the game into your own strategy? I, I don't know, because I think that with... When they were, like, lying out together uh, with no with no furniture, I think you could see some people definitely buckling under the pressure, and I think that would be very interesting to take note of who's having, who's having an easier time dealing without all of these comfort, who's not. I don't think there really is... I wouldn't sabotage it in order to prolong that state, you know? I wouldn't actively seek to maintain it. But I think it's a good way for you to really connect with someone, you know. I think, you know, if you're sleeping, spending the night on the floor next to a person, you know, you get close to people through that. And holding up the ball uh, as a challenge, that's, that's a team-building exercise. So I props to any of the players that were able to kind of use that to socialize and grow closer to some of the other people in the house. So we have... Uh, I guess one of the last things I wanted to touch on was the yoga session. I don't think it, we really got too much out of it, but I think it was just another example of how Risha just isn't really suited for the social part of this game. You know, Not only did she not want to participate, but she was like... <laughs> She was coming after Pilar. And Pilar, it's not even... I don't even think Pilar was hosting the yoga thing, If it, right? I think it was Greg. No, it was, it was Greg. <laughs> so the way that the edit looked, it made it seem like Cindy and Risha were the only two not participating in the yoga. And then Risha's just like, oh, I can't believe Pilar's just out there. She's got no game, which is pretty ironic because the fact that Pilar is actively engaging in those activities, that is playing the game. She's That's the social part of the game. Oh you know, God. I'm sorry she's not... Uh, you know, going topless in the jacuzzi, but, you know, everyone has different parts, uh, or I guess different aspects of their game, so I thought that was really silly for Risha to just get so upset about it, and even Cindy was just like, oh, okay, I mean, I like the yoga, it's a cool idea, it's like, don't worry about it, so I, I don't know. Oh my gosh, I would have loved to hear what game Risha would say she's playing, like, what is the game? Like, tell me, how do you, how would you define the game of Big Brother? Because if you're going to alienate yourself and complain about how Pilar is bonding with everybody else in the house, and you're saying that that's not a part of the game, then you're not suited, like Jacob said, for Big Brother at all. Um, even though Pilar doesn't have a strategy, the first few weeks, the first two, three weeks of Big Brother is completely social. Just be liked. Be liked by everybody in the house. Don't cause drama. Um, and participate in things that you think are silly and fun. Like the yoga session, 
that's something that not may not be everybody's thing. I mean, Brittany was talking, a lot of house guests were talking throughout the whole thing, but it's a bonding experience. Um, and not participating in things like that is just another reason why somebody would vote you out later. So just a, it's a shame that Risha didn't take that as an opportunity to get in with everybody like Pilar did. Um, and <laughs> she was so mad. She really she was. was. So salty. Like, she was throwing all of her makeup, it, like, aggressively down, like, <laughs> I'm just so upset. And then, like, throwing her eyelashes, like, right in the mirror. But, oh, gosh, it was hilarious. It was absolutely hilarious how, in a sense, delusional Risha was and thinking that she's playing a game when her definition of playing a game is getting naked into the jacuzzis, flirting with Kevin, um, and then just kind of alienating herself from the rest of the house. I completely agree. Do you think that if the house guests did vote this round, do you think uh, Risha would have been evicted? Oh, yes, by a landslide. I mean... Marcia even said that she had a speech prepared, and she looked way nicer than Pilar did, so I'm just assuming that everyone told Pilar that she's safe and that Risha's going home, so Risha had to dress up and doll up a little bit. Oh, well, so, yeah. 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 So I'm pretty sure that Risha would have gone home had the house guests voted anyway. She definitely pulled out the cougar outfit, which leads me to believe she was like, well, you know, I better use it while I still can. Mm -hmm. uh, but, yeah, she even made a comment when she was talking to Cindy that wishy-washy and avoiding her, which kind of leads to um, me. It makes me think that she's probably out the door anyway. Uh, so let's go to the big twist that was revealed at the end of the night. Uh, we found out that the first five people evicted are going to have the opportunity to compete to get back into the house. You know, Now, Canada has done this before, and it was uh, just a public vote, but it sounds like they're going to be competing in an actual competition to try and get back in. What do you think of this twist? I love KFC. Thank you so much for sponsoring this twist. It really means a lot. Hope you get that publicity. Um, so I really love comeback twists. A lot of times people that leave the game have no business of leaving the game. And the fact that they allowed it to be the first five people to be evicted, it really gives that opportunity to potentially a threatening person to return or to somebody that was an underdog and just wasn't given a shot, somebody that uh, really could benefit from the comeback twist. Um, I'm always a fan of comeback twists, because, you know, <laughs> anything is possible when you with Raiden. You're laughing because you know it's true. You know it's true. Um, but I'm not going to make this about me. <laughs> of course. No, of course not. No, you know, the comeback twists are absolutely great, and... Um, it's also cool to see somebody that, like, potentially was gone maybe three weeks removed, and, like, the house is in a completely different state. There's, like, different sides, and they're, like, really needing this person to come in to, like, help them. So um, I love Come Back to Us, and I'm glad that they made it the first five people. I agree. It'll be uh, really interesting to see. I'm not sure if I like uh, Risha's odds. You know, she could barely climb up that net, so... Of course, we don't know what the challenge is since it's sponsored by KFC. It might be who can eat the most double downs in five minutes. You know, we don't know yet. Uh, but I'd say that Risha probably, the odds will be against her, which sucks because she's going to be in sequester for four more weeks to potentially just go home. So definitely yeah. sucks. But, yeah, I actually, I really like the twist. It should be really interesting. It'll be. Uh, I, I'm. I'm excited. I'm excited. I think it's the best. It's the best time to do a twist like that. You know, just the first five. Canada had a return twist, and it went from four, final four to final five again, which I thought was a little too late for me. Yeah. So I'm glad to see that they have learned from their mistakes. I'm so also nervous though, because it means like if there was to be like a huge blindside early on, then the very threatening person could return back. Oh, I agree. I, I think odds are the person that comes back will most likely be the fifth person evicted. You know, because they're gonna they're gonna have that adrenaline still. They're gonna be really their their mindset still gonna be adjusted to the game. You know, everyone else they're gonna be in sequester for at least a week, and they odds are will probably kind of relax, get uh, out of touch with what's going on, and their mental mindset, their physical um, um, ability. So. I don't know. My, my guess is that the last person evicted will be the one that comes back, but who knows? Who I have no idea. 
I'm going with the third. The third? Okay, the third and the fifth. You've heard it here. We'll see. <laughs> it's Mark. We'll see who comes back. Um, so the next HOH, it's just going to be a regular HOH week, sounds like, and uh, some sort of endurance. Who do, you, who do you like going into this HOH? Who do you think is going to do well? Who do you think should win it? And who do you think should not? I absolutely think Cindy's going to pull out a win. I think she's on a... Once, once you win a veto competition like that, I think it really inspires you. And knowing that you were in a troubling position prior to, I think Cindy's going to really try to win HOH. And if it just means standing there for a long time, I think Cindy can handle that. She seems like a really strong uh, competitor and puts her mind to something and can do it. So my prediction is that Cindy's actually going to win HOH this week. Do you think she should win HOH this week? Um, I think... I think she should. I mean, she also wasn't doing yoga, so who knows what her relationship is. That's true. That's true. And she was nominated, and her name was spit out most. The person that was nominated next to her is out the door. Rish is gone. So, like, she is technically the person that has the most targets based on first impressions. Uh, so I think she should win HOH, and she should then use it to establish herself good uh, with everybody, even if it means making fake deals with people that already have deals. Just, you know... Best friends for now. Gotcha. Oh, yes, of course, of course. I think Cindy's greatest... How should I say this? I think... <laughs> I love that Cindy's biggest offer to us is just going to be all these hashtags, I feel like. Friends for now, blank with an S, I don't know. I love we'll her. See. She's we'll a see. goddess. I think that Bobby has a really good chance at winning this HOH. You know, he's very into yoga. Greg, maybe. Greg seems like he's got more of a... He's more... He has, like, more of a stout body type, whereas Bobby seems a lot more lean. Um, so I think he could probably win. I don't know. I do agree that it, it might not be the worst thing in the world for Cindy to win. It will kind of give her a target since she's already won a veto. But, you know, sometimes you really need an HOH to make those social connections. Mm -hmm. And if she really feels like she her back is against the wall, then it might not be such a bad thing to grab that power this week. I would just be upset if she won and nominated Pilar again. Then that's when I would be like, you know what, Cindy with a C, emphasis on the C, you need to go see a doctor and learn how to play the game. Yeah, that would be very disappointing. But, you know, who knows? So... I'm very excited for this season. You know, every episode just gets me more and more pumped uh, to keep watching. And um, sucks for Risha, but I don't really think we lost that much tonight. And I'm excited to see what's going on when the live feeds uh, start. And we'll just kind of go from there. Do you have anything else you want to add or talk about, Keith? Yeah, just make sure you stay connected with us. Follow us on Twitter, at Jacob Harpel, at Most Humble. And uh, most importantly, stay basic. Stay basic. Bye. Bye.